Thank you so much. I wish if I could ask you all to come closer, but uh, I know it's, it's a necessity that you have to stay at a distance because I've drawn quite a few slides which hopefully you could see and enjoy. So today I'm going to talk about stories that make a difference. I'm a filmmaker and most of my stories are from the mundane. It's not from any books or anything, it's from around us. The last one being a film that is based on some stories that my father narrated to me. Kandipu. It's a film uh, based on my father. It's a lot of local ghosts and troublemaking spirits. And it was very, it's supposed to be very popular in, in Kerala and my own speaking audience. For me, his stories are a reality. And I'm sure for a lot of you, you are all familiar with such creatures. Uh, you may know them in different names. Their forms might change. Their main activity of scaring you could change. But the fear remains. All of you, it's made a difference with all of you. And you're all kind of scared of them, right? When it is dark and you, you feel afraid. So that's what stories do, because these characters don't exist at all. Story needs a storyteller, a story creator, and a receiver. Very important. Sometimes story creator and storyteller can get combined, but receiver is a must. All of you. If without receivers, storyteller's purpose is defeated. And for a storyteller, for his happiness, or happens is when the receivers are happy. The receivers take that narrative and they absorb and, and put, it, put it into practice or they, they believe in it. That's a happiness point for uh, a storyteller. They are all around us. I mean, I made a sketch of myself which is around with people, our neighbors are storytellers, our friends, our family members. Dogs. Sometimes you like to understand them with heart, but you know they also tell stories. The TV, the books, everything tells the stories and they are all around us. So today I'm going to tell you about a story uh, that happened to me. In 2020, when the lockdown happened in Mumbai and all, all over the country, my parents, both are 91, they were getting hugely panicky. And uh, we decided as a family, myself, my wife, my daughter, and my pet dog, Goofy, we decided to travel all the way by road to be in a safe Babu, to Kerala, to stay with my parents for two to three months. Work was happening online and it doesn't, it didn't matter whether we are in Mumbai or not. So this was our journey. You know, we were we were we were squabbling and you know it was it was a very sort of a two and a half days of uh, journey. We got like special permission from the Joint Commissioner of Police in Bandra to come all the way here. And the moment you enter Kerala, people are looking at something about us and they are all getting scared. There is, a, there is a story going on here. They are looking at our number plate, MH02, which is from Mumbai. And that, that time, the maximum I think cases were in Mumbai and people were really scared of these cars. Looking at our cars, some of, some of them were wearing masks. Some of them were like getting so so scared that you know the ladies would you know kind of spread rumors when we are driving around the neighborhood. People are not at all comfortable with this car moving around. They didn't know that you know we, we might not be infected or whatever, but it was pretty sure to everybody. When we landed over there, my sisters will come to meet us. It was, it was a house where my parents were staying uh, on, the down, on the ground floor and we were supposed to stay on the top floor and when we went up, we had to cook, we had to clean our utensils, we had to clean our clothes, everything ourselves. There was nobody to help us. It was almost like we were infected patients who were staying in quarantine. This is in 2020. Things became much better later on. 
but this was quite hard. And that that top floor of our house, nobody used to stay. It was given on rent. And my 90 year old parents would go up to check the facility or whatever before we arrived. So when we opened the tap, the water was brown in color. It smelled of muck. The plumbing lines were all leaking. And the windows were broken. So in the night when you are sleeping, you get airlifted by mosquitoes from the bedroom to the living room. You just wake up scratching all over. And there was some masonry work required in the kitchen area. And it's not very comfortable to cook when rat snakes are chasing for rats around the kitchen. So it was, it needed some work. And we called our regular guys. And uh, they all said, oh, come in just now. And so this is the, apart from being the experts in their field of work, they are also expert storytellers. So they, they all realized that, you know, we have to move back. This is the first guy, Jay Plumber. So he said, you, Sir, I'm coming from Putota to Kupon, but I'm on my bike and just about to cross the bridge and the bridge broke. A few centimeters away, I got saved, but I that jolt that gave me, I had to meet a counselor all in this one hour, two hours time, and now I need two weeks of rest to get recovered from it. Same time as my quarantine period. This is Surya. I have changed the names to just protect the people's identity. So Surya is the is the carpenter who, was, who said that you know I was just getting out to come to your place and you know I, I got bitten by the stray dog and it is a very well known believable sort of a thing because there were some stray dog incidents uh, biting incident in Kerala and, and to avenge that and I know many people got onto the road and killed millions of dogs. So it's a believable sort of a story. He said that, you know, I got my finger grafted, it's growing now, it'll take two weeks to grow back. And then Chandrapan, the electrician, he said that, you know, as I was walking out, because there were no coconut pluckers nowadays due to Corona and lockdown, it fell on my head and I could see only blurs, I can't come in this position, I my MRI, whatever, I need two weeks of this. Then the masonry worker, Andrew, he said that there was no head, so I had to load all the sacks of cement myself and I got trapped under the and the gunny bags and I am just trying to squeeze and call me and take me it will take me three days to squeeze out of this and then further with the eggs and whatever it will take me two weeks to come further whatever we could manage we did looking at the YouTube and other places we kind of managed all the pumping lines and stuff what I am trying to say is stories are everywhere and storytellers are also everywhere and then on the 15th day, we survived and uh, my sisters and folks came to meet us as if that we, had, we arrived that very day. Very happy reunion happened. And I looked at my sister. My sister used to travel from Tripunaka to Kote every day. And uh, she used to get, she just retired like maybe two, three months ago, she retired in, in 2020. And her, uh, she had like, she had put on weight because that's a sedentary lifestyle. Always every day, two hours, she had to go by bus and uh, to go time and back. So she used to get a regular sort of aerobic exercise, uh, which she didn't know it was so important for her. She used to get a lot of aches and pains like that. So I said, I'm going to take you for walks every day. So I, I started taking her for walks through the very quaint lakes of the Kupolika. And so that when I leave uh, the town, so she can continue with the habit. She was not at all ready to do that, but she, as she walked, one day the crow flew past, really low, and attack happened. And as the hot liquid kind of dripped behind her, more than getting ripples, she was getting worried. She was really panicking. I, I just plucked that leaf and I kind of took out the shit. And uh, she, was, she was like, no, Mone, this is a serious problem. Our grandfather died three days after. The same thing happened like 45 years ago. <laughs> she was like, oh my god, this is like a serious situation. And we all come from a very scientific curiosity sort of background. So, you know, we, we tend to connect various factors that, we, you know, are unrelated also. The numerology, 6th of August, and versus many, many factors we try to, she tried to connect. And she said, 
She looked at the six very carefully and thought about, you know, what, what we had, you know, whether it's a non-veg eater or a vegetarian eater, and, you know, in fact, she could even probably find out a sexual orientation of the group. She was very serious about it, and then the pH value, the density, the, all those maths was happening at the, which side of her back, all those things happened. And she finally said, I have to smell. She did not smell and I, that was like the pits, you know, I said that this is not done. And she said, no, this is serious bad news. Now she was also worried that it's corona time. So if, what if the crow ate some, some shit which is also a corona infected, whatever, whatever parts. And uh, we finally reached the RTPCR center and gave this to the sample there for testing. You know, so she can also be not worried about corona infection from a crochet. And finally, we reached and she immediately opened the panjang and like there was a, there was a few pages dedicated to, you know, what sort of words, where do they shit and all those things. So, and she looked at it and she kind of figured out that it's really bad. But she could really understand it. And then my father arrived. My father said, Thursday, very good. As much shit the crow has to do. It's even better because it's an auspicious day for crochet. So, you know, I made this chart uh, based on the observation and understanding so that which days where, when uh, it is good, what part is, is better, bad, all those things I kind of made this chart for people to kind of understand and, you know, follow this religiously. The power of storytelling, guys. Right? These are stories somebody created and we. We hold on to it with so much conviction, even today. Religions have, have stories. Without stories, they can't survive. Politics needs stories. You need geography has stories. Archaeology is full of stories. Science has a lot of stories. History is just stories, and you know, as you know, we keep rewriting history. So there is there's no there is no uh, earth of you know stories in any of these subjects. You know, from 1930. Pluto was part of our solar system. And we all, that was the narrative that was sold to us by our teachers. Just in 2016, it was, was shunted out of our solar system. Not only that, he was abused as a dwarf planet. Because of some, he has only some 1400 miles of uh, diameter or something like that. So, it, you know, this as and when we keep getting more and more knowledge, the stories and the narratives keep changing. And uh, there is nothing that is written and something that we can call it as reality. So, yeah, probably some of the story trails are also lies. Stories are also lies, maybe. But, uh, have you ever questioned why barbers have a Tuesday holiday? Because somebody said that if you cut your hair on a Tuesday, you will not survive for the next Tuesday. So the barber ensured that probably, you know, no business goes to any barber that particular day. So, you know, I get my days off and I'll work on Sundays when they have their off days. This one, Chirping has said, there's a whole book, a whole few pages on the Panjang about Chirping, of this earth, what to do, what not to do, Rahu, Ketu, and all of you are aware of all stories. Why we say bless you? You know, when the Black Plague was happening in, the, in, in London, and it became like really solid, when everybody was, one guy sneezing is a, is a sign of infection. And so, so the church said that, you know, quietly you just say anybody can, instead of the, the priest going home and like, you know, doing all those last rites and stuff, instead of that you just shout from wherever, bless you and that's enough, you know. So that's the, that's how the story started. So everything has a story. And why Sundays and holidays not Mondays? Have you ever thought about it? So there is a, there's a story behind every practice. And I think every small practice also can become a story. This is where it changes things. So a small act also can become a become a story which can change courses. A narrative that has influence and that can have a, an impact on masses can change. A simple act by Gandhi, by picking up sword, created a revolution. And we got, I mean, not just that, but many simple acts put together, created a mass hysteria, mass movement in the country. And that's how we got our independence, a revolution without violence. It's a, just a simple act. So today, that's something that I want to talk to you all about. That, you know, we need, we as a generation, older generation, have messed up the world. 
It's full of biases. And that's what we are gifting it to you. Because, you know, our narratives of hate, hatred, and grief, you need to rewrite these stories. And I think it is possible with simple, simple acts. These simple acts have to become, uh, you know, stories of compassion, kindness, and that's how things will change in our world. And I, I really believe in it. Because today's youth is dispirited, uninspired, depressed. There are so many cases of depression. And I believe that we are the cause, our narrative, our stories that have been put into practice is the problem. So for you to change, you need to have those, make those simple acts to make those simple stories. And I'll tell you a little story about this shirt. This is, uh, my niece was born in 1997. And, uh, you know, she was the last of my nephews and nieces. She got the least attention from me. I, she used to be really scared of me because I had black beard and I used to look even more ferocious than me. And that she, I also used to scare her a little bit because I, I used to get a lot of fun out of it. But the whole thing used to smile and spread a lot of happiness silently. Three months ago, she got a job in bank. And uh, I went for the New Year's this last 15 days to look at her. And my sisters had, took me to a shop to buy me some clothes on a product. On a product, you know, they, they just took me there. And I selected the shirt. And at the counter, she paid for it and said, This is my first journey. And I'm paying for this shirt. And she gave me a surprise like that. I did wear this shirt. I had the shirt for You know, the narrative changed. I, I was arrogant that, you know, I am the elder uncle, so I need to gift all of them. She changed the narrative with a small, simple act. And I think this is something that can happen for you to reboot this world, you will also have to make your own story. And you will have to do that simple act that will become a story, that will change the narrative, that will change the practice all over. And a small act is enough. You don't need to do big things. You don't need to write stories. So I hope you can come up with the next narrative. You can do the next storyteller. Thank you so much.